awaiting intermittent communication at the moment from the crew. And we do expect Starlink TV of the extravehicular activity with man maneuvering unit on orbit 33 at about 9.14 Central Standard Time this morning. As Challenger passes over Hawaii Gold Center and the Milo Ground tracking station on orbit. Challenger Houston, a minute and a half to LS Tedris. We'll listen through Yargody and talk to you at Guam at 1 plus 0 5. Okay, dear, we're doing good. We'll see you there. Here is Jerry. I'm back in the interview and I've got the T pad up here and we're going to start configuring. Roger, we've been listening. It all sounds great to us. Payload Payload Operations Control Center has confirmed that the Solar Maximum Mission Satellite's Attitude Control System has been successfully deactivated. A spokesman at the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland reporting yet another step completed in the complicated but rapidly escalating sequence of events out in space, leading to the first ever rescue attempt by one orbiting space vehicle by another. Doug Miller of CBS Radio affiliate KTRH has more from the Houston Space Center. 
Doug Miller at the Johnson Space Center. A pair of space shuttle astronauts have now embarked on what promises to be the most spectacular feat in shuttle history. George Pinky Nelson and James Ox Van Hoften crawled out of Challenger's airlock about 40 minutes ago, glancing up for a glimpse of the broken Solar Max satellite. Nelson has now donned his jet-powered manned maneuvering unit, the Buck Rogers-styled backpack he's scheduled to fly over to that satellite. Hazy television pictures have been beamed back to mission control, showing the satellite slowly spinning, awaiting its rescue. Nelson must stop Solar Max's slow rotation so that it can be grabbed by the shuttle's robot arm, nestled into a custom-built cradle in Challenger's payload bay, and prepared for the first satellite repair in orbit. Doug Miller for CBS News, the Johnson Space Center. Rogers, Buck Rogers. Those words coming just a few minutes ago from the Space Shuttle Challenger as astronaut George Pinky Nelson flew away in his jet backpack. This is a pretty good fire machine you got here. You can tell it's free and have lots of things for me. It's a lot of fun. Roger, I can see the smile on your face from here. Mission Control has been watching everything on television cameras for a while now. Challenger is now about 200 feet away from the broken Solar Max satellite, the $77 million bird the astronauts are set to repair. First, Nelson must fly next to that satellite, stabilizing its slow spin so that the shuttle can grab it with the robot arm. Well, they've been out about 45 minutes ago. Nearly five hours of work lies ahead. Meanwhile, on board, the astronauts still inside the shuttle have been told to take pictures of a big forest fire and board. 
Borneo, reportedly the biggest of the century. It's apparently the same fire that the Soviets say they're taking pictures of from their Salyut space station. So the backpacks are flying once again. The most daring task in space shuttle history lies ahead this morning. Live at the Johnson Space Center, Doug Miller, KTRH News. Nelson getting ready to fly over to the Solar Max, looking at him in the cargo bay. Very stable, wearing the man maneuvering unit. Okay, I've got the uh, power tool on the MSR tool board and the DF and the DFR configured. Good deal. DFR we laid right now. Okay. 
Okay, looking good. An extraordinary marriage of the world's most advanced technology, the spacesuit transforms George Nelson into a human satellite. The jet backpack has turned George Nelson into a human spaceship. He travels with his own oxygen, his own water, his own electricity, his own propulsion system, and his own lights. And he even has his own nose scratcher in the helmet in case his nose gets it's a trip to solar max estimated to take 10 minutes it's interesting to realize that although he's moving very slowly on the uh, screen he's really traveling at better than 17,000 feet per second what's important is how fast he's traveling in relation to the spacecraft and in this case it's only uh, approximately a foot per second this has never been accomplished or attempted in space history, or I guess we can say in the history of the world. He is 310 miles above the Earth on his way to catch up with the Solanac satellite. He will attach himself to that satellite. Out there at about 140 feet at this time. Good. Just stop it from wobbling and spinning. And then the remarkable robot arm of the Challenger will grab that satellite and bring it on board for the repair job. K-band radar shows distance 140 feet from Orbiter to Solar Max. Something that makes this task a little more difficult than otherwise is the fact that the satellite is spinning. And when he gets close to the satellite, he's going to have to match the turning rate of the satellite before he is able to attach himself to that satellite and bring it to a stop. There you see the astronaut and in the lower left-hand corner, the solar panels of the satellite. The satellite was launched in February of 1980 performed well for about eight or nine months and then problems developed. Looks like you might need to come up to use the... Hickey, you copy? Yes, A new satellite, it is estimated, would cost three or two hundred thirty-five million dollars to replace. Two hundred thirty-five million dollars. The repair job, about forty-five to fifty million dollars, about twenty percent of the cost of a new satellite. It's like you need some more, but you don't appear to have much motion from our viewpoint. This camera work should improve. Pictures being taken from cameras on board the shuttle. The astronaut has a television camera in his helmet. And if that works properly, we should see some interesting, if not spectacular, pictures, John. Probably switch to that camera when we get a little bit uh, closer to the satellite. He's attempting to do something he's trained for literally hundreds of hours in the simulator, but he's really at this point in time has only had about five minutes in the actual backpack to get the real feel for it. The sun glinting off the all-white aluminum backpack. Looks like a bright sun himself, doesn't it? Almost hurts your eyes to look at it. It does. It looks like it's rotating, does it? George Pinky Nelson is 5'9 and weighs 160. The satellite he'll wrestle with is 18 feet by 7 feet and weighs some 5,000 pounds. It may seem like a mismatch, but it really isn't. Yeah, I think Pinky will be up to the task. That blob there is, uh, is the astronaut. They're having problems adjusting the camera on board the shuttle. Okay, you're still well low. We now see the satellite in the upper left-hand corner. Periodically, you can hear voices in the background. That's uh, the crew on board telling uh, Pinky exactly where he is, and just how far away from the satellite he is. There you see the satellite in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. 
the astronaut in the lower right. Some dis distortion of the picture, and we will be uh, getting back to those pictures, I'm certain. It's uh, an extraordinary day, as you were saying. They have practiced and rehearsed for this on the ground, in water tanks, and in various simulators, but doing it is quite a different thing. And we now have pictures of Kiki Nelson Calendar as he approaches his quarry. Nelson moving at about one half mile an hour. He could go faster if he had to. He is not attached to the shuttle. And this sort of performance just said real pretty down there. I imagine it is. The backpack was tested out on the last shuttle mission. You know, it's unfortunate that the camera can't catch what the, uh, the human eye can see in space. Uh, every astronaut that comes back says that the pictures do not do justice to the, uh, to the sight that you see when you're really up in space and seeing it for the, uh, for the first time. And that is the cargo bay of the shuttle. That looks good from here. No cloud, huh? I think the main theme of this event is if you ever need a serviceman on a Sunday, call the astronaut corps. And they're having as many problems as we have sometimes with our own cameras when we're out with the family for a Sunday picnic. It looks like you're having a hard time. We said, don't mess around. You notice the very slow rotation, the very slow spin of the Solomac satellite. It makes about one revolution every six minutes or so. Counterclockwise. When Vicky gets close to the satellite. Why don't you just finish with this? When Pinky gets close to the satellite, he's going to have to slip in between those Morton Dean reporting from Houston. We always try to end this program with something beautiful from the world of nature. Can't think of anything more beautiful or remarkable than that. The story of uh, what happens next will be told on Face the Nation to follow and on other CBS News programs throughout this day. I'm Charles Kuralt. I hope you'll join us here again next Sunday morning. Reporting very close towards it, and we've lost our picture now. We'll cover it in a minute. news via satellite. I'm Robert Burns. The space shuttle astronauts this morning caught up with the broken Solar Max satellite. Both the spacecraft and the satellite are presently flying in formation 310 miles above the Earth. Astronauts George Nelson and James Van Hoften floated through an airlock into the ship's cargo bay. There, Nelson donned a jetpack so that he could fly to the nearby satellite. This is a pretty good flyer of the sea you got here. Roger, I can see the smile on your face from here. Astronaut Nelson will attempt to attach the satellite to the space shuttle's 50-foot crane so that it can be hauled into the cargo bay for repairs. Mutual's Jim Slade explains what's involved. Once Nelson has stopped the rotation, uh, he will just wait. And then the shuttle will approach to within about 30 feet and the mechanical arm will be used. Uh, astronaut Terry Hart will use the mechanical arm to connect with the satellite and to bring it aboard the shuttle. Astronaut George Nelson is about to dock with the uh, satellite just moments from now. This is Mutual News. Crippled satellite is about to be rescued in orbit. Astronaut George Pinky Nelson, strapped into a jet backpack, has flown the football field's distance away from the shuttle to dock with that broken Solar Max satellite. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Ooh, hey, that is deep like it. The images beam back to mission control have been spectacular, scenes reminiscent of a science fiction fantasy, an astronaut riding a jet backpack over to a slowly spinning satellite. Now the flying astronaut, the human satellite named Pinky, must fire the small thrusters on his backpack to stop the bird's slow spin. The shuttle itself is going to fly over and grab the Solar Max with its robot arm. Nelson and fellow spacewalker James Ox Van Hoften will watch as the arm lowers the satellite into a custom 
Bill Cradle in the payload bay, the bay that is now wide open ever since yesterday's send-off of the satellite called LDEF. Yeah, the bay is in the nitrogen, now that LDEF's out of there. The LDF work has barely begun out there, and the work has barely begun for the astronauts themselves. We're now seeing images beam back to mission control of, of uh, the astronaut Pinky Nelson trying to dock up with the satellite itself. Again, the image is quite spectacular being being back. Everyone in mission control seems to be pretty excited about all this, and the work has barely begun. The EVA, the spacewalk, scheduled to go on for at least another four hours as the astronauts try to pull off the first satellite repair in space. Live at the Johnson Space Center, Doug Miller. KTRH News. The shuttle until they figure out what they're going to do next. We'll keep you posted. Reporting live from the Johnson Space Center, Doug Miller, KTRH News. Bay and they remain there and they're both ready for you. 
first attempt to dock with a crippled satellite in space has been a failure. The docking device that was mounted over astronaut George Nelson's stomach somehow failed to grab on to the crippled Solar Max satellite. And to make matters worse, some rockets on the satellite that were thought to be inoperable fired up and started working against him. Nelson tried to physically grab the satellite's wing-like solar panels with his hands to slow its rotation. That failed, too. In fact, it may have made matters even worse. Now, Commander Bob Bob Cribben has tentatively decided he'll try to grab the satellite with the shuttle's robot arm. It's not clear just how complicated that might be. There's some thought being given to the possibility of sending George Nelson back over to the satellite to try slowing it down one more time. The problem is the satellite spins too quickly for the robot arm to grab onto it as it stands right now. So the decisions are still being made over in Mission Control in an attempt to save this mission to save the Solar Max satellite. Live at the Johnson Space Center, Doug Miller, KTRH News. are now trying a last-ditch attempt to rescue a broken satellite in space. If they fail now, the try will have to be postponed until tomorrow. KTRH's Doug Miller is at the Johnson Space Center with this live report. Doug? Commander Bob Crippen has been trying the uh, risky task of grabbing that satellite, the crippled Solar Max satellite, with the shuttle's robot arm. That's something they had hoped to avoid on this mission by using those jet backpacks to dock an astronaut to it to slow down the slow rotation, to stop it, actually, so that the robot arm could grab it. Well, George Nelson's attempt to dock his spacesuit to the Solar Max satellite failed earlier this morning. He tried to slow it down with his hands, but that only made matters worse. So now they are trying to dock with it physically. They've tried at least twice with the shuttle's robot arm. No word on the success or failure of those tries. So far, we haven't received any word they've actually grabbed onto it. So it looks as though, at this point, the uh, Solar Max satellite is still floating free in space. If none of these attempts works, in other words, if the shuttle's robot arm cannot retrieve the satellite. They're going to have to back off overnight for about eight miles. They've already sent up the data necessary to do that and wait until tomorrow for another try to dock up with that uh, crippled satellite. Again, the satellite's still floating in space. The astronauts have not retrieved it yet, and we'll keep you posted on any developments. Reporting live from the Johnson Space Center, Doug Miller, KTRH News. The Challenger's crew is giving up until tomorrow. The attempt to grab that Solar Max satellite with the shuttle's robot arm has failed. This due in part to an intermittent failure in the shuttle's radar, according to Commander Bob Crippen, who just radioed that word down to Mission Control. So now Challenger has been ordered to back away from the Solar Max satellite, to stay away from it by about eight miles, thus preserving fuel that might have been needed to overnight to keep the two spacecraft apart. It'll back away about eight miles, and once again tomorrow, they apparently will try again to dock up with that crippled satellite. For now, the Solar Max rescue is on hold. Live at the Johnson Space Center, Doug Miller, KTRH News.
funny of it. Whatever is convenient, we can both get in the airlock before you hook up. I'd like to get one last call to check uh, four one from you. I can't believe this. So said astronaut George Pinky Nelson, his frustration evident as the first and now the second attempt to carry out the most important mission of this shuttle flight to capture and repair a satellite failed. More from Peter Van Sant in Houston. Astronaut Pinky Nelson docked perfectly with the SolarMax satellite, but the special latch on the front of his spacesuit failed to grab hold to the satellite's trunnion pin. Without that connection, Nelson was unable to stop the slow rotation of the satellite, a step that was supposed to be made before the shuttle's long manipulator arm could grab the satellite and bring it back to the cargo bay. Nelson then moved to one of the satellite's solar panels, which extend out from the satellite like wings. Nelson's new goal was to try and stop the rotation by grabbing onto the panel. Mission Control in Houston provided instructions. You're going to have to hold on to it both hands, I imagine. But Nelson wasn't able to stop the rotation. Mission Control wanted him to try again. But Nelson was concerned about running out of fuel. Nelson, you're going to have enough gas to do that. Okay, come on back in, thanks. After Nelson returned to the shuttle, an attempt was made to grab SolarMax with the 50-foot-long manipulator arm. That attempt failed, and at this time, the shuttle is backing away from the satellite. Another attempt to capture SolarMax will be made tomorrow. Peter Van Sant, CBS News, at the Johnson Space Center, Houston. CBS News, this is Rob Armstrong. 
There were high hopes today aboard the space shuttle Challenger, but those hopes were dashed as astronaut George Nelson was unable to link up with and stabilize a broken satellite. More from Bruce Dunning at the Kennedy Space Center. They're rewriting the flight plan for the Challenger. They had to do that after astronaut Pinky Nelson failed to lock on to the crippled solar observatory. Tomorrow, they'll try a new tactic, grabbing the solar max directly with the shuttle's 50-foot-long crane. Then the crane will swing solar max into the cargo bay, locking it into the so-called FSS, the cradle that will hold the satellite during the repair job. But first, they have to get Solar Max into position. We think uh, the spacecraft is in a power configuration uh, such that we'll be able to go ahead and restabilize the spacecraft and spin it down. Tomorrow, we'll come back in, do another rendezvous using normal Z, do a rotating grapple, and berth the spacecraft onto the FSS. After we have the spacecraft onto the FSS, we'll uh, ungrapple the arm and stow it and uh, prepare for the EVA the next day. NASA officials hope to keep to the flight's original schedule, but they are talking now of possibly keeping Challenger up in space a little bit longer. Bruce Dunning, CBS News, Kennedy Space Center, Florida. The $77 million Solar Max satellite should have been cradled inside Challenger's cargo bay. By now, two shuttle astronauts should have been fixing the big bird, much like mechanics making an on-the-road service call in space. But astronaut George Pinky Nelson's attempt to dock up with the satellite failed, and no one knows why. So the flight plan is now being rewritten, moving all of the repairs into a single spacewalk scheduled for Tuesday, and possibly extending the length of this shuttle flight an extra day. And we're thinking about doing some powering down now, uh, looking at the possibility of extension day, even though we don't think it's necessary right now. Okay, we'd certainly be happy to come on down, sir. Now the shuttle is backing away to try again tomorrow in a last-ditch attempt to pull off the most ambitious task ever faced by America's space shuttle. Live at the Johnson Space Center, Doug Miller, KTRH News. CBS News, I'm Bill Curtis. The crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger will try again tomorrow morning to rescue a crippled satellite. Doug Miller of CBS affiliate KTRH reports from the Johnson Space Center in Houston. By now, the $77 million Solar Max satellite was supposed to have been berthed inside the shuttle's cargo bay. By now, two astronauts were supposed to have become the first satellite mechanics in space. But for some reason, a docking device called the T-Pad, mounted on astronaut George Nelson's spacesuit, failed to latch on to that satellite. And that has left NASA officials like Flight Director Jay Green scrambling to shuffle their flight plans. What, what went wrong? I don't know. And I'm not sure anybody does. There have been uh, some speculation about the T-pad getting cold. Uh, I don't know. Nelson tried to slow the spinning satellite with his hand, but that didn't work. Commander Bob Crippen tried to grab the big bird with the shuttle's robot arm, but the satellite was spinning too fast. Now ground controllers will try to slow the spinning Solar Max satellite so that the shuttle and its robot arm can try again tomorrow. Doug Miller for CBS News at the Johnson Space Center. CBS News, this is Paul Lockwood. A disappointment in outer space as the men of the Challenger were unable to retrieve a disabled satellite and haul it into the space shuttle for necessary repairs. But there will be another try. Bruce Dunning reports from the Kennedy Space Center. They've got several more tricks tucked up the sleeves of those space suits. The shuttle astronauts will try again early tomorrow morning to pluck the crippled solar observatory satellite out of its wobbling orbit. The astronauts failed twice today, first when Pinky Nelson's hitching device refused to lock on to the solar max, and second when the Challenger's cargo crane failed to grapple the satellite directly. That's when NASA officials decided to try again tomorrow. NASA spokesman Jay Green. The path we opted for was uh, the stop the grapple attempt while we had enough gas to back off, re-rendezvous tomorrow, and go in for a rotating grapple. But they'll only try again tomorrow if they can get Solar Max to stabilize itself over the next few hours. Bruce Dunning, CBS News, Kennedy Space Center, Florida.
Flight Director Green says if the Solar Max isn't retrieved tomorrow, the shuttle crew may be brought home earlier than the scheduled Thursday landing. Earlier, there was talk of possibly extending the mission if the satellite rescue is successful. More in a moment. Floating free. And today, the most but the Goddard Space Flight Center say they have roughly three more hours to automatically attempt to slow the spinning Solar Max satellite. Now, just seconds ago, Goddard announced they have had absolutely no luck in those efforts whatsoever. It is still spinning at the rate it was spinning before. If it can be slowed down before its batteries die, there is a strong possibility that Solar Max will not be rescued by the men now flying the shuttle. Challenger's crew has just hit the sack, resting up for the most important day of their flight. And we'll work on that spacecraft and get in a condition for you tomorrow. Oh, great. I sure hope we can do that. Roger, so do we. Tomorrow, Commander Bob Cribben is expected to move his shuttle in toward that satellite for the risky task of grabbing the big bird with the Challenger's robot arm. If that satellite cannot be rescued, the shuttle just may have to come home early with the dream of servicing a satellite in orbit, just another disappointing failure. Live at the Johnson Space Center, Doug Miller, KTRH News. CBS News, this is Paul Lockwood. The Challenger crew is about midway through its latest sleep period now aboard the space shuttle. When the spacemen arrive, ground control may have something to tell them about whether an attempt will be made to once again try and retrieve the disabled Solar Max satellite. Scientists at the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland are trying to stop the satellite's rolling and tumbling motion to make the chances of capture possible, but things aren't going too well, according to NASA's Charles Redmond in Houston. But right now, it does not look all that good. Uh, for the Solar Max satellite. The attempt today to rescue the spacecraft by George Nelson and company on the Challenger did not go well due, we believe, to a mechanical failure in the device that George Nelson would have used to actually grab a hold of the satellite. Present plans call for the shuttle mission to end on Thursday, but the flight could be shortened if another effort to retrieve the Solar Max has to be scrubbed. More in a moment. made a total of three tries to attach himself with it, but an equipment failure prevented that. Then the mechanical arm made four stabs at grabbing Solar Max, but it failed. The rescue attempts caused the spacecraft to spin in three different directions at rather quick rates. But most importantly, it moved the solar power supply panels away from the sun, meaning Solar Max had only six hours of battery power to live. A new computer program was sent up to the satellite late this afternoon, and just moments ago, the Goddard Space Center in Maryland reported the spinning rates had decreased somewhat, and that one and a half of every four minutes was now showing Solar Max getting solar energy. But it's not out of the woods yet. There will be two times in the next two hours during which Solar Max will not get any sunlight at all. Around 10 tonight, engineers may be able to determine the fate of their sick bird. In the meantime, NASA says it will try to grab Solar Max again tomorrow, almost under almost any circumstances. But they're also now considering waiting until Tuesday if the satellite starts getting power again. They say that will give the Goddard people more time to settle Solar Max down and make it easier to grab. Chris Peterson, KTRH News, live at the Johnson Space Center. News. I'm Carol Pazewski. Space officials are not letting a disappointing Sunday keep them from taking an expensive gamble Monday, trying once more to have the Challenger shuttle retrieve and repair the disabled Solar Max satellite. More from Chris Peterson of station KTRH. The crippled satellite had been scheduled for repair during the current space shuttle mission, but Sunday's attempts by the astronauts to grab the spacecraft and haul it into the Challenger's cargo bay failed. The result was a situation worse than before the crew tried to fix it. Solar Max was spinning out of control, its solar power panels unable to supply badly needed power to onboard systems. Four-year-old batteries were relied upon to keep the satellite alive, but a new computer program has dramatically slowed the spinning to a rate slightly lower than it was before the rescue attempt, and the batteries have held up better than expected. 
Now NASA says they will use every ounce of power left in the power cells to stabilize the solar max as much as possible. Then the shuttle will be moved into position and the robot arm used to try to snatch the spacecraft and bring it back to the cargo bay for repair. Solar Maximum Mission Manager Frank Zeppelina says it's a one-shot deal. If it fails, a $400 million project will be lost for good. Chris Peterson for CBS News, Houston. The uh, plans for Challenger. We have Doug Miller live from NASA. NASA has ordered Challenger to back away and try again another day. The problem is that the rate of the satellite's rotation, the Solar Max satellite that Challenger tried to rescue yesterday, was slowed by ground controllers to the point that would put its docking target away from the shuttle at the time of rendezvous. Now, it'd be easy enough for Challenger to maneuver around and try to dock with the other side of the satellite, but that would burn up valuable fuel. And so ground controllers had just radioed up to Commander Bob Crippen that he should not try to rendezvous with that satellite today. Instead, they're going to try it tomorrow. No word yet of whether that might extend this mission one more extra day, but at this point, it looks as though they're not going to try that rendezvous that was planned for later this morning. Reporting live from the Johnson Space Center, Doug Miller, KTRH News. Challenger's astronauts prepare for another try at snagging Solar Max tomorrow. Soviets accuse the United States of trying to run them out of the summer games in Los Angeles. Good morning, this is Reed Collins with the CBS World News Roundup. A drama 300 miles up, an astronaut in a backpack unable yesterday to dock with the Solar Maximum satellite. The space shuttle crew was sent to put back in working order. The shuttle itself then unable to snag the satellite with its 50-foot arm. Efforts to come to grips with the satellite sent it tumbling even more erratically than it had been. While the astronaut slept last night, ground controllers dealt with that, and this day dawned with a plan, reported by Bruce Dunning from the Kennedy Space Center. Out in space, the astronauts will try again tomorrow to lasso the ailing satellite that eluded their grasp yesterday. Overnight, earthbound scientists reworked their computers and got the Solar Max to stop wobbling. Now Solar Max is sitting quietly in space, but with its hitching pin facing the wrong way. Now the scientists are going to rework their computers yet again and get Solar Max to start revolving slowly so the shuttle can latch on to the pin. From Mission Control, they outlined the revised Solar Max pickup to Shuttle Commander Bob Crippen. Our plan is to maintain the attitude you're in now and spend all day today on Verns, which will use about only uh, 12 pounds out of the forward and then set up for tomorrow, going in for a rotating grapple uh, tomorrow. And uh, how's that sound to you guys? Whatever, but uh, you're right. I think we do need a rotating to uh, be able to make sure that we can't get it. So hopes are high once again, on the ground and out in space. Today, the astronauts will take it easy, operating the 360-degree camera and tending their hive of honeybees. Bruce Dunning, CBS News, Kennedy Space Center, Florida. The mission may have to be extended for a day or two. Challenger's crew has been left hanging on hold. The question is whether the shuttle will stay in space an extra day. The rendezvous and rescue of a $77 million satellite has been postponed. The good news from spokesman James Elliott at the Goddard Space Flight Center is that overnight the big bird was stopped from its spinning. Sunday's pessimism has turned to optimism here today. Uh, the situation probably is best characterized by saying that uh, we aren't out of the woods yet, but we're getting close to the edge. Now, the bad news is that NASA now wants the satellite spinning very slowly for a rescheduled rescue trip tomorrow. Now, the crew's been told that tomorrow's scheduled spacewalk has been postponed until Wednesday. All of this indicates the mission may be lengthened by a day. There has been no formal announcement of a decision yet, but a briefing is now going on here at the Johnson Space Center in which that decision may be announced. If it is announced, we'll get back to you just as quickly as possible with the word on the possibility of extending this flight of the space shuttle. Live at the Johnson Space Center, Doug Miller, KTRH News. CBS News, I'm Douglas Edwards. Nicaragua. Challengers turned in for the night. KTRH's Chris Peterson at the Johnson Space Center tells us in this live report that the astronauts had a fairly relaxed day, but the pressure is going to be back on tomorrow. With the second scheduled rendezvous and capture of the Solar Max satellite pushed back until Tuesday, the only thing left for the crew to do today was play with the student experiment on board, a bee colony. 
Those space bees have begun to develop a honeycomb up there, something their control group Earth counterparts have not done. Then, it was bedtime. Winter Houston, we've got about two and a half minutes to LOS Tedris. Looking forward to a great day tomorrow. Okay, we are too, and uh, we'll see you in the morning. Good night, Terry. Good night, Crip. Good night, Scope. Good night, Pinky. Good night, Jim Boy. Tomorrow, it's another crack at grabbing the $400 million solar max with the arm. Mission Control says everything is looking good at this point for the first attempt to occur shortly after 7 Houston time. Live at the Johnson Space Center, Chris Peterson, KTRH News. CBS News, I'm Bill Whitney. Probability of success for the Space Shuttle's new attempt to retrieve the Solar Max satellite. With as few maneuvers as possible to conserve fuel, Mission Control says Challenger should be in position to make a brand for Solar Max in about eight hours. There'll be no space rock this time. The crew will use the shuttle's remote control robot arm to reach out and snare that satellite. If that works, it'll be deposited in Challenger's cargo bay for repairs.